The Wi-Fi password? Are, are you kidding? That thing is like a hundred. <laughs> I, I actually don't know it. I had it um, taped to my laptop. It's really, really long, Keith. It's like 30 characters. Does Tyson have it? Tyson might have it or Amy. I don't remember it and Tyson doesn't either. Dude, I have it. I wish I still had it taped to my keyboard. I don't have it. Nope. Who's all there? Do you have a big audience? We have two people besides the two I asked to come. Oh, cool. Sounds like a party. Give me one second, please. No, you're fine. Once we have three seconds, that's all that matters. You can have all the time you need. First of all, I gotta bring up our packet. Sorry, I forgot to print it because I haven't been used to it yet.
that you can easily hack into, which we don't want. That's why we have to record. Connect to me. So I did let the builders know. They said they'll do what they can. The development's already done for the most part, so I know it's, I found it's not. So, but I let the builders know that our builders. Okay. Are done. okay. So if it gets bad again, let me know. Because I can, I can call them again. No worries. Okay. It is time to start. I apologize for being late here. Uh, we'll go ahead and begin our meeting with uh, first we'd like to welcome all who are here with us and those who are viewing uh, through YouTube. Uh, we'd like to begin with an opening prayer reading or expression of thought. And we have Commissioner Stoltz for that. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for all the many blessings that we have. Father, at this time we ask you to please bless us as we discuss matters in the community that we will do it in a manner that is pleasing unto thee and those that are involved. And please continue to watch over us as we go through these proceedings. And as we travel, that we may do so in safety. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 And we'll also ask Commissioner Stokes to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Put on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'd ask commissioners if you have a conflict of interest, if you'd please make such a declaration. Having hearing none, I suppose that there's no conflicts, so we'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as outlined for today's meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as outlined for today's meeting. Commissioner Lyons made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second from Commissioner Cummings. How do we work this now that we're half on and half off? Any opposed say aye. Fine. That works. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Item number one, and before we get started, it is nice to be in public again. It's been a year, so it's great to rub shoulders with compadres, and, and uh, glad that things are starting to return to normal, so I appreciate it for that. Item number one on the agenda is a discussion decision for the Harris Hill Phase 5. 10 lot residential preliminary subdivision located at the top of 1075 West, just above 4125 North and 4300 North, parcel 16 015 0013. Joe. Okay. Um, it is between, it's at, the, it's at the top of 10 or 1075, um, just above, in between about 42 to 4300. Um, Leroy Harris is the owner, Carson Jones is the applicant, there's just over seven acres and ten lots. Here's the layout. Um, as you can tell, there's the ten lots. You won't see the detention pond there. It's, with, it's within the other phases. So if you remember when we did Harris Hills Phase 4, there was the one detention pond. Oh, you can't see it off of here. But it would normally be right at the bottom of this spot right here. They calculated it to have all the phases, so that's why there's not one shown in this one. So there's no issue with detention. Um, so, go ahead. So engineering has taken these lots into consideration when they mm -hmm. approve the retention or detention lot? Correct. Okay. And, oh, come on, there it is. So you can see this line right here. Um, that's our wells right next, our well properties right here. So there's that restriction. They can build. It's a, they're buildable lots. You can sell them. There's no issue. The only restriction is um, the runoff and you know, making sure that it's not going to have any issues. It is listed on the plat, so so you guys know, and that's part of the red lines. 
that are the conditions, which Carson's well aware, it's buildable, there's no issues there. We just want to make sure that the what you know, the recharge, the water, the well, there's no issues there. Does that make sense? Well it kind of does. Like how, how, how do we have assurance of that? Would you like to answer to that? For the just sloping away from the screen area. Yeah. So that valley sort of burns up and basically it's to keep that grade out of the way and we have our fence line and obviously we can we go in and mow the edges and that's kind of our way of keeping an eye on the QC uh, signs of anything running off into the spring area that would be an indicator there's a problem. So these three lots that are hashed out, they affect it will actually be four. Four lots. Then how will you how will you maintain the integrity of your system? So that fence line, we, we already have that fence up. That project was a couple years ago just to ensure that delineation. And, and then during the building process, we'll keep an eye and, and the landscaping will probably go touch base again and just ensure most are, are aware of it, like she, Jill was saying. On the so it's going to be recorded on the flat track? Yep. Yeah. And then you'll have not really an easement. Now, or maybe it will be an easement. You'll have the right to walk in and make any changes that city deems necessary. Yeah, if you walked in and, and they had dug that out, trying to level it off, and can see that it's it's if it was to run water from irrigation with who knows what pesticides, herbicides, you know, that's something you would take action on. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. So, and then, as you can tell, it will connect to 4300 and they'll just do the portion that would be equivalent. Not the whole skyline, it will just be that one portion that they'd be responsible to improve. On mm -hmm. the intersection, the 4300 would meet the road that's already finished. Mm -hmm. Will there be stop signs? I think right now there's yield signs. There's ongoing this way and this way, but then horizontally, I think it's a yield. Well, we have a stop sign in there because there is some foliage that um, is kind of heavy on that corner. And even as it is now, it's a little, I mean, it's not a very active road, but sometimes things come right up on you like you don't, it's just, oh, somebody's there, stop. You know what I mean? So correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, and they'll have a stop sign at the top of 10th. Well, they have, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? So, not at that, not there, though. Oh, not She's talking about 900, 943, where they intersect. We wouldn't make Carson do that. Oh, uh, thank you, Carson do that, because it's not part of his subject. Go ahead and sit down first. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So, we'll can we city that we can talk about. That? That's something we can talk about. And okay. there's, um, we can bring that up and talk about that in our group. You, and you probably ought to talk that. about that sooner rather than later. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, it probably wouldn't matter until that road is Skyline is a constant <laughs> conversation that we have. Um, so. There's actually a lot of traffic on that dirt road. Yeah, people, there's more popping out now than there ever was. They're working on it. Closer to 43, and they're getting built. They're just getting finished. So, but, and then the, I've had multiple questions. Um, how many phases are in hair sales? There's only five. This is the last one. <laughs> Come on. We were hoping to see Carson every month for the next oh. 20 years. Oh, he's got other projects. <laughs> so Carson's not going away. They're just not called Harris Hill. This is just the last Harris Hills one. Okay. All right. So this is just finishing up Harris Hills. It's just the uh, 10 lot. As staff, we just have the red lines, both on the plat and just the engineering comments. Um, other than that, so Carson, we talked about this last time, as you start to encroach upon the uh, gravel pit, is that going to have any effect on these homes? I see you still have that buffer there. This is pretty far away from the gravel pit. Still? Okay. As far as this section of road, this is the furthest piece of ground developable from the gravel pit west of 900. Okay. So, this is definitely not going to have any effect more so than my house does up there. Okay. Or the Roy's house does up there. So, all right, thank you. Okay.
We haven't had meetings in here for a long time. <laughs> 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 and okay. so that's all we've got. Any questions for Seth? Or the applicant, Carson, if you want to step forward, state your name and address. If there's any questions for you, we'll go ahead and throw them out. I'm Carson, you know, 1106 West 4050 North. What's new? The applicant for Harris Hill Space 5. Roy's the owner, is here in the audience with us. So I'm open for any questions. It's kind of straightforward and pretty basic. Phase 5 5. So this is just finishing off what we started seven years ago. Probably have already sold the, the 10 lots, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're definitely. Not gone because we can't sell them yet, but there's waiting list on sure, multiple sure. D. So, understand. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant or staff? Okay, thanks, Carson. Thanks. With that, then we'll entertain a motion. Uh, this is to approve, correct? To approve or deny to for us to recommend Sorry. City Council? Yes. Okay, I'll make a recommendation to approve or deny the item number one on the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve item number one on the agenda. Commissioner Lund has made a motion that we approve item number one on the agenda. I'll uh, second that. And we have a second. Any opposed, say aye. Who seconded? Uh, Commissioner aye. Stokes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It will be on the 22nd of June meeting. And this will be a public hearing again. These aren't public hearings, these are just public meetings. So if you have comments, we encourage you to send them before the meeting so it can be in the packet for all the commissioners or the council. Okay. Did you have comments in regards to this? Well, I have some questions. Yeah, but I don't know if it's appropriate for the planning commission or if That is up to you. Yeah, so yeah, it is, it is up to us. And normally we have a public hearing and then we entertain comments, but we don't like to see anybody who has concerns not voice those or express those. So if you have, we've already voted on it, but please stand. <laughs> I, I know you already voted on it. Um, I, I wasn't against the approval anyways. I just had some um, comments that I wanted to make that I didn't have time to make. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of what we were voting on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I mean, I know there's really no reason uh, not to approve it, but I did have questions. Jill knows um, she didn't see my video very well. I live at 4215, so my property bust up to uh, what phase was that? It was phase four. Phase four. The, the houses there, the houses of people there. What house do you live in? I, I live at 4215 on 900, so my property bust. Who did you buy your house from? 25 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Carson's oh, been around for a long time. Sorry. I think it was Aguilar. Oh, just, and Schaefer's originally. Oh, Schaefer's. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. They own that. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, because everybody knows everybody. Um, but uh, the biggest problem that I've had is I'm old. <laughs> I can't keep my windows clean and I can't keep my cupboards deck clean. Because it's the dirt, and with the wind temperature. So that's my biggest complaint. Is I does no one have the water in these down? I'm here? sorry. Can you state your name, please, and Lou address? Lou Andrews. Lou Andrews. And you did give us your address. Thank you. Yeah. So that's an item that we've discussed with all the phases. Yeah. We worry about the dust and mm -hmm. the traffic. Yeah. And, and the traffic. And that was my other complaint. Is you said there's not much traffic on that road. Ah, no, she said there's quite a bit. Oh, oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, actually, I didn't think that that corner was super busy, actually. It's getting it's it's busy, busy, but it's, busy, but it's busy not, the road it's not still not high impact. So when you situation. live four houses below it and your windows are open, and you know, I mean, I was a school mom, so I get teenagers, but um, holy cow, and then they round the corner, and, and I called the police chief because they're. They're coming um, out of uh, above me and then out of there going 57 miles an hour. I mean, it is insane. Oh, wow. And then when I'm out there in the day working, 
don't think I'm crazy. I will yell at them. Slow down in the loudest voice I can, and I've got a pretty loud voice. And they hit their brakes. So, yeah, I use that so word quite a bit. Guys and Jill, is there any way that we can ask? I guess Parsons owns the the gravel pit, correct? No. No? Parsons don't. No. It's not the trucks. The biggest concern are the, the, the younger the yeah. younger traffic. It's from the new construction, the new houses going in, there's a lot more people. The razors have come out. I see little kids in helmets without their riding gear, you know, who aren't even old enough to ride. So I've talked to the police chief about that. It's not that I'm trying to kibosh people's fun or, you know, that kids can't be kids. But I guess this is kind of a planning commission thing. If we are going to grow this city, which we are, I don't know how accurate the newspaper was, something like 6,500 to almost 11,000 people because we built a lot, and we should be growing. I mean, that's what we do. Then we need to take into consideration a number of things. One is water. We have, especially in this year, we're in the second year of a severe drought. When I moved to the state in 1978 and built a home, and they, they, they only kept records since 1999, so it won't be on record. It was a really, really bad, bad drought. We bought a home that was six years old. The front end was in, the back was it was a half acre. And the city, you could not put in a lawn. Okay, well, let's, we can't go back. I know, but so, we can move forward. The one thing that I would ask that maybe we can do, and I've seen this a lot in construction zones, residential and commercial, that we'll have a water truck run periodically to keep the roads a little bit damp so the dust doesn't fly. It's part of our stormwater pollution yes. prevention plan. That's why I didn't call so, Tyson, or right. not Tyson, Carson on this one, yeah. and I saw the dust. His dust is fine. I couldn't tell which lot it was coming off of. So I did call the builders and let them know. So who would be responsible for 4,300? 4,300? That would be us. The job the doesn't bother me. It's the traffic and the, and the speeding and, like she says, that's a very... So the speeding and visiting. that is the police department sure. and they're, they're looking at that and they're already trying to figure out what they're you, doing. You mentioned leave your windows open and the dust gets on your cupboards and... Oh, I... So, so... <laughs> And Gil, it, it will get better once all the faces are sure. done. So. But no, yeah, and then we're going to have another 10 lots. <laughs> I'm like, how many years can I take the dump? I mean, it's, I don't want to take the dump. If you just yeah. water. Not this year. <laughs> if you just water around yeah. some of those, those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you know which huge home. Yeah. 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 And I understand that we do. I get that. When you're doing construction, you've got to, you know, uh, move, move dirt around and they put in a rock, became wall, and then the patio. Oh my God, they've got piles of dirt. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I do. I don't okay, so, so, it's just so, so did you have any other concerns? We, we really do. This we'll get covered with water to get across. Uh, that, that's my main book. That's it. And I, like I said, I probably wasn't appropriate. This probably isn't appropriate for this meeting. It would probably be more appropriate for the city council. Yeah, but I think it's appropriate that you brought it up. It's something that we need to address, keeping the dust down. Mm -hmm. Certainly speeding, that's a city issue. I'm just afraid a child or animals are going to get killed. I really am. And uh, the police chief, uh, he's going to put one of those uh, speed. Uh, yeah, he said be right in front of my house. Which Good, is there you go. With me. But um, the dirt is a huge thing. I cannot use my dad. I go out every day with my leaf blower and do all of my furniture <laughs> and whatever, and it doesn't make a dent. So that's my biggest yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. No, uh -huh. no, thank you very much. Okay, Jill. So you're done. Uh, Commission of Communications. You are done. Thank you. It's a making it happen, making us do it. I don't know what's going on. Here. <laughs> I don't do it. And you want to leave Pleasant View. You want to take the little bit of No, I never want to leave Pleasant View. Carson, okay. Carson won't be there. Carson, we got that on record that you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Nice. All right. Uh, commission communications. I don't have anything commissioners. Okay, let's.
go ahead and move right into staff communication and training. I see that we've got Ryan with us okay. and Tyson. You guys made the request. Yep. These guys said they would. Do we so, have any other commissioners on uh, Zoom? No. Just Jeff said he wasn't feeling great. If he felt okay, he said he was going to hop on, but he okay. didn't feel very good. He's got me, oh. though. <laughs> Julie was the only ones that were excused. Okay. So, um, we have them here. We'd like to hear what they have to say. I certainly have some questions, so. Who do you want first? I don't care. Who's brave? <laughs> Either way, uh, Ryan, go ahead and come forward. That's, I think that was one of our biggest concerns is as things develop farther north, we know that we don't have secondary water. We know that we have wells only. What do we do for fire protection? What, what safety considerations are given? And then where does the county, I guess with Northview Fire District, you take care of the city and the county, correct? Weaver County as well? Yeah. Okay. Correct. With a question mark? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually have a mutual aid agreement with the county. If there's ever a fire, if you look on a fire scene, how many fire trucks are there? Northview Fire has two trucks in our area. We'll show up and you'll have to be five. The August City sent one, Weaver Fire sent one or two, and vice versa. When Weaver had the fire, we sent our trucks there. And so, so it's a good working relationship. Yeah. And so, if there's a fire in the county, Weaver is in technically their area, but we'll be the first one there. And we so a couple of years ago, we had a huge fire that yeah. kind of got out of control. Last year, we had a smaller fire that was contained pretty easily. But does that concern you? That as we develop more and more, are we? Are we encroaching on more and more ground that could potentially take resources away? Yes, um, that's one of the main reasons we build our fire station where we did up on the hill. Uh, when we actually, I, I gotta be careful what I'm saying because we presented it to North Dogger and they weren't too happy about that placement. About 4,300. It's too late. It's a year already there. So well, tonight. this was before we could build it. They weren't happy because their thought process, and I should say they, um, the thought process that they told us is for emergency service, if you want to be centrally located, so you can go in a big circle. But fire trucks go a lot easier downhill than uphill. So that's why we want to try to get as far up the hill as possible. And with Skyline Drive there, we can, when it's completed, we'll be able to shoot all the way in both directions. It'll make it a lot nicer. Um, for water, I work with Tyson on every development, every project. If there's not water, then you're not building. <laughs> but that means there's no water for drinking either. So you, I mean, I know that uh, developers have to meet as far as fire hydrants mm -hmm. and requirements that way. Um, where do you get your water from? Is that is that is that from the well or is that well, culinary? And those are eight inch lines, correct? Eight is probably smaller. Yeah, I'm going to worry about it. Coming off the top, you're, you're in the, the, the 12 idea of 4,300 feet in your, your water manifold of that bigger line and then it reduces to the eight. So the fire marshal, what what keeps you up at night as we start to build more and more where there's less and less water and water availability? So the issue we had a couple years ago with Bull Patch and their fire is that in press and told you we hooked a hydrant up in Bull Patch and we got drain their tank real fast. So that's the big issue is up at the top, it's hard to recharge your tanks up there. So give us the worst case scenario. You Take their tank out. Your holes are dry. We go then we'd have to go for this down the hill. And that we actually look at the hydrant and then gave it full patch. And that's not tight and nothing. Build the city line and we have plenty of water. So instead of we just fill our trucks there and then drive up to where we need it. So you just spend more time circling when trucks are not going to fill up, come back out. But it is a concern. So what are your recommendations to help ease the concern? Fire marshal, you certainly have the right to go to local municipalities and say, here's a concern, here's an issue, we need to address it. To an extent, yes. He's actually on our development committee group. Good. 
So well, in the group, he's one key piece. Tyson's another key piece. Dana, our engineer. And then there's me, um, the mayor, Amy, and Ben. <laughs> All right. But they're the, our key piece because if they don't agree or anything, then they either have to adjust to these guys or else it's a non-starter. So we just spent a lot of money on drilling a well a couple years back. Are there plans in the future, Jill, to seek another well? As we start to approach, Tyson, I guess Tyson will answer that when we bring him up. He's the best one. Okay. So finish with yeah. Ryan and then. So we'll one move thing on. that we can't do, um, again, we have to be follow strict to the code, fire code. I can't require what's not in the code. Even though I have concerns about development up on the hill, it's hard to put more restrictions than what the code allows. So, what does the code allow for homes? say over 5,000 square foot north of a certain point, are they required to be? It doesn't matter on the direction. It all is based off of square footage of home. So what is that number? So it would say we go off the fire flow, how much I'm pulling out of each hydrant, how much water. And right now, up north, we do have really good water. As you go further up, it may so if I want to build a 7,500 square foot home, I'm not. Well, we actually have an ambitious ordinance um, in your city. Anything over 6,200 square feet of livable space that has been included in garage gets sprinkler system in it. Okay. And then, so, so the state law actually says if I wanted to, we could require sprinkler systems in any home on right. your bench because anything over a potential tank grade gets a sprinkler system. Yeah, I knew that. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to put that in. I know you're a builder, and you don't want to do that in your every home. I, I was talking to another builder earlier, and I said I would love to have sprinklers in every home because there's no, not been one yet in a home that has sprinkler system in it. So people won't die in a sprinkler system, but it's it's expensive. Expensive. it is expensive. So will there come a point where you'll address our ordinance mm -hmm. and say, thanks, Carson? And say we uh, we feel the word of point. Thank you very much. The word of point where every home now we're going to require a sprinkler system. I don't think it'll get that point. Okay. The legislator won't. It's been brought up before the state legislator. They won't push it that far. Okay. The reason why we're having this discussion last week, we approved a lot up in Pole Patch, and there were some questions about fire protection and. Secondary water, and I guess they're using and their they culinary water. Guys in the county. But, for, and then so they'd be dealing with the county fire department, but if the county fire marshal and myself have the same requirement, and we actually talk frequently, and he, he called me on all these and said, This is what you're requiring. Okay, great. I'm requiring the same thing. So, okay. so what I require for flood of you, unincorporated items will get the same requirement. Okay. So when we have an application come in and staff reviews it and we see that the fire marshal's approved, then we can rest assured that you're you don't have any concern. Okay. He reviews everything after sure. you guys get. It. Yeah, we hopefully before we get it. Yes. Yep. Yep. His is one of the comments if it's gonna end up changing the layout. Nothing will come to you guys until we know the layout is okay. perfect. Sure. Last question. This is a very dry year. Um, are there going to be restrictions on fireworks? I mean, right now it's beyond the canal. I, I was waiting for that one. So say no, and we'll be all right. No, yeah. <laughs> um, we so don't. We allow. do have restrictions in for the new already. I think that we don't allow anything above yep. the canal. Right. Yes, everything above north of the canal, you can't shoot. Uh, but above that. I don't think so. I talked to the county fire warden. He doesn't think it'll happen. The state fire warden doesn't think it'll happen. Again, this goes, and I talked to Tyson, this goes back to the fire <coughs> company, our big lobbyist up on Capitol Hill. The last time they had a uh, restriction for no fireworks was back in 2000, and there was such a big political pullback, and it'll never happen again. So, okay. unfortunately, it won't happen, but we'll be ready. Well, the city at least has that restriction above the yeah. canal. Yeah, sure. So we try to protect your yeah. wildland up there. 
Well, that's the area that's going to get out of control. That's where all the open space is. Right. So. And okay. as you talked to you years ago, if it gets started, does it take much to get it moving? I mean, here it is, first of June, and we've got wildfires all yeah. over the state of Utah already. Right. Which is crazy. Yeah. So, okay. Commissioners, any other questions for Fire Marshal? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mike. All right, we'll do it. Thanks, Thanks Ryan. Yeah. You're next. Okay, Tyson. So, what concerns do you have about running low of water as we develop farther north? Uh, so you're going to get ahead of the pump system that's trying to get water to the top uh, where that last wells punched up there where it was productive as I think everybody hoped. But the mechanism of your adequate public facilities have come into play there and, and that's where you can see those water moratoriums come before I guess you got to a point that Having shortages. So a couple of years ago, we developed, we developed a new well, correct? I think it was 14 would have been well four or held well. Uh, yeah, that sounds about <laughs> right. Uh, are you with that? No, no, that would have been the one up in Coast Book Hill. Yeah. Uh, and then shortly after that one was the Pleasant New Booster Station, which is in the well, you're taken out of it, the existing well, a weaker basin, and then uh, supplemented by Bona Vista's system, greater system that serves that lower area. And then the idea is, is you're, you're boosting the lower zone of the city. The, uh, the next future project would be to build a tank higher up on the hill, that booster's getting into that tank, and you, as growth demands that you're going to put a booster station at that tank so that will shoot higher. Are, are the city, are we looking at developing any new wells? No, more, uh, it's not off the table, but more updating the older springs. Uh, your workhorse is sort of that older one spring. Uh, and yet this year, the lowest it's been uh, in my time. Watching it, so yeah. it's pretty scary when you're used to what two years before you had one of your highest highs yep. seen and blowing out the seams, and two years later you're in a drought both years, and so we didn't even break uh, 300 for the first time. So you have your high in the uh, uh, spring season. Uh, we didn't even break 300. So I've brought this up before, and it's always a no starter. And I get it. I mean, finances are always premium, but there are tens of thousands of gallons of water every day, if not hundreds of thousands of gallons every day that's running through aquifers, they're going through ducts, they're just going out nowhere. Is there any way we can capture some of that? I think you're starting to hear that conversation uh, picking up. Uh, culinary water versus how fast everybody's building, and that's the whole Utah in general. Well, if you stand over here on the corner of oh, yeah. 600 and, and uh, Alberta Drive, you can hear the water. 500 in Alberta Drive, you can hear the water discussion all the time. Yeah, some of that, that's uh, non-potable sources. So, And that's where your protection zones come into play. In reality, you can have a, you can have a well PC out overnight. So if you're doing your testing, your annual, your your three year, six year, nine year, it's part of the schedule of certain tests. No, but can't we look at non potable water for fire protection and irrigation and floor for the irrigation side? I've heard rumor that's the idea when uh, uh, Plain City, where they built that bigger pond right off the canal, and uh, the idea is to pump it back uphill just like we're talking and take that back up there, which most of it's run off and left over next for canal. But then you have the movement that wants that water to make it to your lakes. Uh, Lake Powell is on her. Lake Powell, the Great Salt Lake saw an unrecoverable descent. That, so there's that group too that they don't want you to take all that water that they need to get it back out to the lakes down here. Or the brine and the salt. And, yeah. and so there's, there's definitely a uh, balance there that I don't know if anybody has an answer to. You take it one 
one way, me personally, I think through conservation and pushing that, uh, that movement is the way, the most direct way you're going to accomplish those goals. The, the ones you see with uh, river water amounts daily that grass doesn't need, or removing grass, it's not made for this area, it's not, those are the kind of movements that are going to probably, and they're the more feasible ones economically, to remove grass versus entire vegetative infrastructures. Yes, yeah, so I'm aware of a, a church house that's sitting on top of a wellhead that's putting 10,000 gallons of water every day. This goes to a duct, goes out to the middle of nowhere, and I think there's got to be a way we can capture that and use it, store it for something. It, but like it goes said, down into the Great Salt Lake, it evaporates, it comes up, it stores in the mountains. There you go. It's yeah. literally what happens. Well, and literally, there are businesses out there that require on so much water flow in Great Salt Lake. So. Yeah, and there's water rights have so many rules that every drop of water and where it goes and who's doing what with it. There's there's a lot of elements there in play. And well, it is a resource, and we need to be aware of it. Yes. So, some years we're blessed, and some years we're not. And the benefit Pleasant View has is honestly Tyson. I he knows a lot more about anything, and so. Okay. So the development Paris Hill Five, where we talked about those four lots that had restriction, that's on your newest well, right? Yeah. Well, no, that's so that's the oldest spring. Okay. So that's what you basically uh, refurbished uh, Pioneer Spring, really. So that location, we spent a lot of time four years ago. That was a big part of. Uh, my first years of and the admin roles was hunting down uh, where that spring was coming from, trying to delineate or have a better delineation of where where that collection is actually happening in there. And and I, we're by no means done, and, but, but you can only do so much. It was up to me by every inch of ground that was inside of a protection area. You're still not. Guarantee and you're keeping everything out. That's correct. But, but you're trying to mean that there there are development demands and nobody has all the answers. So there's we ever had issues with the uh, E. coli and yes. yeah. So like a lot of the homes, they'll so they'll be added to our our source protection list as more possible contaminants and and. Uh, they get on a little notice where we send them information more periodically to, you know, here's the concerns, remember this is what that is back there, and uh, we build relationships with the neighbors to those sites and, you know, sort of get the, the active one that takes up the cause where they're there 24-7 and you can't, you don't have the means to monitor you know, surveillance and we put in uh, alarms on it, uh, anything that uh, somebody can open to try to get a warning. But those relationships, I think, are what count. Cause right. We, that's, you hear about it, they have your number, and you can deal with it immediately. And before we got that fence up, as people moved in, and that became a more active area, uh, the one there, she was calling in. Uh, multiple things a night that have no business and you don't want in your culinary area. So those those people are part of that protection. That that those plans help identify all of those. So, all right. So you don't have any concerns as we start to develop because it's not going to slow down. I mean, we're going to go farther north. I think. Uh, I think there's things that you you know you could do to. That we're, I think, preparing for and working towards to hopefully make it less worrisome. But okay. that's always our concern. We always look to see if there's concerns on your notes from staff. If you're okay, then we're okay. But oh, absolutely. If you're concerned, let's make sure that we're doing things before we 
it seems like there's a lot of politics in play that sometimes we close our eyes and say, well, we'll let this one go because we'll catch up on it next time. Yes. No, and, and that part, there's rules that I wish weren't rules that don't allow us to do certain things or uh, and hopefully, you know, working with those people to maybe stop some of that. I think uh, obviously, I, like I said, if I could, I'd buy up everything up around them and um, that's not me either. So, yeah. Understand. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate all you do. Commissioners, any other questions? Thank you, Tyson. Yes. Brian, please. Yes. One last thing I was going to mention, I forgot. So, one thing North Dog is dealing with is our development going further up north. We're actually proposing that the developer pay to put in the booster pump, because we have to have a pump to push water up. And then instead of charging all of North Dog and residents to keep paying for maintenance, ones that are on that line would be paying the maintenance for the pump and for the extra charge. So that's something you can look at as you go further north. You just have a cut off and say anything, anyone above this address has to pay the extra fee to run water up the hill. You got that, Jill? I think it's just a great idea. One more idea that you can I mean, No, those are good things because if, if they want it, they should have to pay to have it. Right. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Jill, anything else? Appreciate uh, Brian and Tyson coming. We don't have anything for the June meeting right now. Okay. So we'll most likely cancel that. I'll let you know when we get closer. Okay. Um, He's a broken heart, I can tell. <laughs> Brian, you have to look at him, I can see. <laughs> for the first one in July, we will be having a rezone. I'm trying to clean up a lot of the lots that have the two zones in there. Um, so you will get. We'll do one huge sweep on one side of 1,000 just to clean it up, and then we'll do all the other ones as we go along. Can you bring up the future land use map? Do you have that available at your fingertips right now? No, because it's not linked to the end drive. If you want, give me like two seconds and I'll be able to. Well, I had a concern. We talked about the meeting last week. We approved a, I thought it was a spot tell you, tell you what, do you want to give me a second? I just have to put it on this thumb drive. Yes, you could. If, if the other commissioners want a big excuse, they certainly may. I just, we talk about we everything east of uh, Pleasantview Drive being zoned for R15. Well, on the master plan, it doesn't show that. It shows R20. So I'm... Give me one second. I'll hurry and grab it. I'm concerned that we went ahead and we approved an RA-15, but it doesn't really meet the master plan, so why would we have done that? We recommend it. You know. No, we recommend it. Go to city council, but one of the things that I keep hearing over and over and over, it shows on the future land use map, it shows on the future land use map, but the future land use map, I don't think it came up. Because everything I that was I right see, next to it. Well, like but everything I've seen on that map was RA-20. I thought it was all RA-15. There were some on the west side that were already 15. They were a different color, different shape. So I just green? Uh, it was gold and yellow. They were all green, and then there was green above, and then the feature landing showed that was right next to it on our screen. Right. It was all green. And it showed green where the zone was, and then green up. And those places weren't developed yet. So. HD. I can you can you hear me? Because everybody went that everybody starts all in that direction as well as the future land use and natural very fifteen. Then we ought to recruit it, but as I look at things I didn't see that. Okay. Looks like everything. Thank you very much. One second. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here's let me explain the future land use map. Okay. So currently this is not exactly what the actual zoning is. So for the parcel in question 
Let me hurry and go down here so you can actually see this. There's my zoom. There it is. So here's the, the the legend. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, can. So what does it show? Yeah, there you go. So you have rural residential one unit for five acres. Right. That would be equivalent to your five acres. Sure. Two, rural two, one unit for two acres. That would be your A2. Your very low density is one to two units per acre. So that means one lot per acre or two per acre, which would be your R20. Your low, den um, your low density is two to three units per acre. So that means you can have two lots per acre, which would be your RE20, or three units per acre, which would be your RE15. So if you look, oh, come on. The yellow is the very low density, which means one to two units per acre. And that's RE20. Which would be only RE20. Okay. And as you can tell, that's the canal. So anything above the canal, according to the future land use map, is only RE20 okay. or larger lots, as of right now. We're getting close to having to re look at the general plan and start that process again. So this could change. Who knows? But if you notice below the canal is that darker green which is two to three units per acre. So let me explain kind of what spot zoning is. So go to that lot specifically. You're close. Right here. Okay. So the future land use map actually shows two to three. It could be RE20 or it could be RE15. So that the future land use map is saying it can be a half acre or a third acre. Whatever, as long as it's one of those two, that's what the future wants to see. We want to see in the future. So you have some of these lots that are like this big one where grandma's closet used to be. That's a big plot. Right. If they want to subdivide, the general plan or the future land use shows that they could go down to a third acre lot. And it would meet the general plan of what the no, residents no, and everybody wants to see. They're already 15 right now. Everything, yes. Hey, Jill. Yep, I thought I was going to hear you. What's up? Could I ask? Could I ask a question or say something? Please do, Sarah. Oh, sorry, Keith. May I ask a question? <laughs> so, it, if if it's an either, <laughs> what? Nothing. He's just joking. What's up? Oh well, I'll wait. I'll wait if you don't you don't want me to interject. No, he, he's just playing around. What's up? I can't even hear hear his play. So. That's Go not fun. We can hear you fine. <laughs> so, in theory, what Jill is, is saying about that one particular piece of property where Grandma's closet used to be, remember that Planning Commission and City Council is under no obligation ever to rezone property unless you f feel like it fits in the best interest of the city, even if an applicant requests it, even if it miss, meets the general plan. You are under no obligation. Just remember that. Did you hear all that? Yeah, it's legislative, so we can choose for yes. any whim that we might personally have, we can say, this is how I feel. Exactly. So the general plan says that's what they would like to see, but it doesn't mean it has to be. Does that make sense? I'm right. Saying. Just the idea of what they want to see. But once the zoning has changed, it's changed for that entire lot, which means all the new ordinances. Right. So there's no more restrictions of what can't happen. All of these things now are permissible because we changed the zoning. Yes. And the reason why it's not spot zoning is because the, the intent is to subdivide. Right. And if it was just to subdivide and have that one lot, say out of the three, that she would subdivide it off of that main, was just RE15, that would be spot zoning because there is no RE15 around it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, I'm... and again, one thing I kept telling you is, is 
the question that you guys need to think about is now the time to do it, and do you feel that it's feasible? If you don't feel it's feasible, or you don't believe now is the time, it's fine. You guys can say no. I did it, but I was a minority. <laughs> you and Andy, but, and, and that's fine. Yeah. And it, it's like city council. If they feel that it's not okay, they vote no, so they know they can at least be on record for it. Okay. I just don't want to open a can of worms we're all going to regret it later. But I understand. No. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Depends on which business you're in, right? <laughs> no, you're good. No, Dean, I, I, I'm glad Dean has his questions and his perspectives. I mean, that way we can see both I, sides. I love everybody. So I know, and that's why you're a good chair. No, I do. I, got, I value everybody's favorite. He's a little crazy, but we love him. That's yep. what makes him Dean. What's your side? Is there any other questions on this? No, that was it. Thank you. How would you guys feel if we have them come once a year, at least so you guys can brush up on questions or anything like that, unless you guys want to come sooner? When you say they, who are they? Tyson and Ryan. Oh, uh, I don't think it's necessary. I, my concern was, or do they have concerns? And well, if they have concerns, are they are they being addressed? Right. So do you want them to come once a year? So that way they can just brush you up on new things. I say we put them on the agenda as a question mark and have them come as needed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So like every six months, say, do we feel like we need to talk to those guys? But and or we those can guys even feel like they should talk to us. Yeah. No, that's great. They, they I just want to give you guys the opportunity to ask questions. I mean, these guys are specialists in their field and they're. That's why they're part of the group. No, I mean, they're good. They're, I, I know them both. They're good. And then if, I mean, if you need or feel that you want to ask questions to Dana, our engineer, I'm more than happy to ask her, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Okay. Nothing else? I don't have anything. Sure, it's fine. Motion to close the meeting, please. Done. We have a motion. We have a second. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you all.